announcements, I want to point out the thrift store will be closed Thursday, December 31st and January 1st. The 2016 offering envelopes are here and they're on a cart outside the chapel in alphabetical order ready for pickup. Once again, as you know, Pastor Paul is on vacation right now and he will be back January 3rd. So I know y'all look forward to seeing him. The worship assistant lists are on the front pews from, for January through March for everyone to sign up. And please fill in the spaces because they do need the coverage. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? Yeah, um, please take on your Are there any other announcements? We continue with our confession and forgiveness found on page 94 in the beginning part of our hymn. Please stand as you're able. We begin all worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are bound of sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God of all mercy and consolation, we thank you for in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As the call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our opening hymn, Once in Royal David City, hymn number 269. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is the first Sunday of Christmas. This is December the 27th, 2015. We welcome you. Come and worship with us. Our opening hymn is Once in Royal David's City. And this Once in Royal David's City was written by Cecil Francis Alexander, this woman, the writer, 1818. And the music is by Henry Gauntlet, Once in Royal, Royal David's City. And this is in honor of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnation. Christ became love and dwelt with us. And is with us forever through eternity.
wisdom, God, and open our minds to the knowledge of your word, that in all things we may think and act according to you, and live a continuing long life with your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of our scripture. Connie Singleton is reading the scripture for this Sunday, first Sunday of Easter. The theme is Jesus is incarnate in the world. The first reading is from 1 Samuel, second chapter. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she had up her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow both in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We're now singing the gospel acclamation. The gospel will be read by our guest pastor. Our guest pastor is Pastor Katrina Hawkins Bowles. Our regular pastor is Pastor John Pollock. He is on vacation. And Patricia Carson Bowles is our pastor. We're going to read the gospel today. It has to do with the Holy Family. First Sunday of Christmas, St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. What you hear 
is her being sent away. That's why she went to Elizabeth. She was sent away in shame. You're going to have a 13, 14 year old girl pregnant and you don't have no husband? You're going to have to get out of the city. That's why they, have, they used to have schools that were dedicated for teenage mothers. Back in, I was watching something on TV last night. And I don't know if y'all caught it, um, 48 hours or one of the things that they had adult people who had been searching for folk. Had a boy who him and his young brother were abandoned in a basement building, so he was searching for his brother. They had a woman who gave a baby up for adoption when she, in the 1950s, and she had been searching for this baby for 20 years. Well, even this woman, 50 years ago, she didn't have no choice. She was sent away to some home for unwed mothers. Y'all heard of these places. And so, yes, it was a miracle that Jesus was conceived. But there was a lot of pain and a lot of shame that Mary had to deal with. But even in the midst of this, we forget how hard this whole process is. See, today's reading, we get Samuel. Now, Samuel and Jesus have some similar things going on. They even have a similarity in the way they end our Old Testament lesson and our Gospel lesson. Very similar ways. Samuel, if you remember, was born to a woman that could not conceive. And so her prayer was that if you let me have a baby, Lord, I will give you that was Samuel's mama's prayer. And so when Samuel was born, his mama gave him up. And he went to be in the tabernacle, to be in the temple. He was with Eli. Y'all remember the story with Samuel and Eli. And Samuel hearing his name being called and running to Eli and said, yeah, you called me. And Eli said, I didn't call you. Y'all remember that story? And eventually he said, if you hear it again, say yes. Yes, Lord, your servant is listening. Speak, Lord. This is the same boy. And so this child had already been given up to God. His mama had to visit him once a year. Can you imagine <laughs> only being able to see your baby once a year? And now we have Jesus. So we have Samuel in the Old Testament, and we have Jesus. So not only is Mary disgraced, shunned, made a fool of, talked about behind her back, and sent away, but now she gets a chance to watch her son be tortured and killed by the people who he came to save. It's a miraculous thing that Jesus was born. But we can't forget the fact that this has not been an easy process. And the thing is that God never tells us it's going to be easy. This is not about it being easy. Life's not supposed to be easy. You can't tell me one person in the Bible that had it easy. Abraham didn't have it easy. David didn't. Daniel didn't have it. There's not one person, not one person. And yet, once again, God has been teaching us about what this means to love. Samuel's mama loved God so much to give her baby up to him. And Jesus and God loves us so much that the willingness to allow the word to be made into flesh just for the purpose of dying. That one of the reasons I, I, I like to talk about Easter at Christmas and why I talk about Christmas at Easter is because the only reason for Christmas is so that there can be an Easter. That was the only reason that Jesus was born, so that he 
Because the light of Christ inside of us is that which gives us compassion, kindness, humility, meekness. This is what Paul was talking about in the Colossians text. He wanted us to clothe ourselves with this. And then he says to above all, clothe yourselves in love. This is why we always have to get back to the foundation of love. While we talk about this whole world being about God's sacrificial love. While we fuss at each other about loving each other. Because it all comes back to love. Above all. And then Paul says, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. See, we can't do any of this without love. The whole purpose of us being here, even in this sanctuary, is so that we may be fed with that spiritual food, that we may be given all the things that we need so that when we leave this place, we can be a light, be hope, and be peace to people that we meet. In our prayer of the day, one of the things that we have in here is that Open our minds to the knowledge of your word that in all things we may think and act according to your good will and live continually in the light of your son. It's not about us living in the light when we come to church. This, is, this day is not the whole surpassing compassion of all that it means to be Christian. Sunday is just one of the days, and hopefully it's a day that we get a chance to meet as a family. That we get a chance to check on each other. And see how we do. We were downstairs talking before Sunday school, and somebody says, is, is such and such okay? He says, oh, I don't know. She wasn't at Christmas Eve service. We are needed to each other. That's one of the things that we forget. I need you just as much as you need me, just as much as you need each other. Because we're all brothers and sisters in this one family, and we're supposed to be our brother's keeper. And if there's something not right with one of us, that's going to affect how we are as a whole. The light that's inside of us is supposed to be so bright that it radiates out of us. And that people who see us are changed by the light inside of us. This sacrificial love that God has for us and that God calls us to have for each other is meant to create and not destroy. It's meant to add and not subtract. It's meant to help us be all that God has called us to be in this world. And we need each other to do it. And so I encourage you all in this Christmas season as we get into 2016, don't forget how important you are. <clears throat> don't forget that people around you need you. And it is your hands and it is your mouth that will create life and light to every person that meets you. Let us stand and sing in the bleak midwinter, hymn number 294. We're singing a Christmas hymn in the bleak midwinter, written by the famous English poet Christina Georgiana Rossetti, who lived from 1832 to 1894. And our theme is we should give Jesus our hearts. He's come into the world. He's become one of us. He's let us become one of him. We're all one body. And we've given him our hearts.
was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and crucified, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to the heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give God our offerings. You may be seated. It's now time for our offerings. Our ushers are Gus and Connie Singleton. This is St. John's Lutheran Church, Rainfall, Ohio. We're very happy to have you worship with us today. We have uh, our pastor is on vacation. We have a guest preacher who preached on the Holy Family. Our guest preacher is Pastor Katrina Hawkins Bowles. Pastor Katrina Hawkins Bowles. We're located at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia, Springfield, Ohio. We have our eight o'clock service and 1030 service every Sunday. We hope that you will join us. We'd love to have you. We have some of the best people here in Clark County who are helping the poor. We feed 9,000 homeless people every month. We offer all sorts of help to our neighborhoods. We're pleased, Lord, that you are here with us, that you're incarnate. We celebrate your birth, the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Flowers on the chancel today are presented by Helen and Ted Wallace in honor of their 60th wedding anniversary. Helen and Ted Wallace have been married for 60 years. The anniversary is December the 29th. They're presenting the flowers. We have flowers that are left from the poinsettias that were here for uh, Christmas Eve. We had our Christmas Eve service as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ when he, God came on earth to become a human person so he could feel what we feel, live among us, and experience what we experience. We're happy to have a violin solo playing in the background today while we're having our offering. Flowers are also presented by Les and Cindy Pearson in honor of Mark Stewart, Mark Everhart, Jesse Pearson, Natalie Barker, Joe Lane in honor of their birthdays. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his abundant and everlasting peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, the first Noel, hymn number 300.
Thanks be to God. Baby Jesus, this is Jesus' birthday. Happy birthday, baby Jesus. We had a birthday party for him on the 24th here at our church. We had poinsettias, we had carols, we had hymns, and now we're celebrating that Jesus is here with us. He's been born to Virgin Mary. He's come into the world. He is love. God sent Jesus into the world to show us love. The gospel in one word is love. We thank you for worshiping with us this Sunday. We're happy to have you here. First Sunday of Christmas, December the 27th. We're still in 2015. We'll soon be in 2016. And when we're in 2016, we'll wish you a happy new year. And I'm happy that you are worshiping with us this day at uh, St. John's Lutheran Church, which is corner of Wittenberg in Columbia. We have services 8 o'clock and 10:30 every Sunday. We have a 6:30 service, which will be beginning not this week but next week. We will follow the whole year. We will receive Holy Communion. We can receive Holy Communion at least once a week. Thank you for watching St. John's on YouTube. Tune in next Sunday. Tune in every Sunday. Tune in any time you want. We're happy to bring you this service. Our church offers a Christian school program for 3 and 4 nursery and pre-K. You can call the school office for more information, 325-4311. Tune in again anytime just by clicking on Google and clicking on YouTube. St. John's Lutheran, Springfield, Ohio. We hope and pray God will continue to bless you, that you have a great year, that 2015 was a good year for you. We celebrate that and give thanks to all the wonderful things that we're still alive, we're still able to serve God. And 2015 and now 2016 is on the way. We will pray for you and continue to pray for us. We're happy that we had a guest preacher today. We're emphasizing the Holy Family, the birth of Jesus. We are all worshiping Jesus. We're thankful for the gift, wonderful gift of Jesus in the world. Our guest preacher was Pastor Katrina Hawkins Bowles. Our regular preacher is Pastor John Pollock, who's on vacation. We had prayers, intercessory prayers, the Lord's Prayer, and we had flowers today. We have the poinsettias. People are gathering poinsettias to take them home. We also had special flowers from Les and Cindy Pearson and from Helen and Ted Wallace for their 60th wedding anniversary. This we celebrated the miracle of Jesus' incarnation. He's incarnate in the Virgin Mary. He is God. He's in the world. And we become one with Him. We receive Holy Communion. We receive eternal life. These wonderful gifts. And we can serve Him. We can listen to Him. We listen to what He asks us to do. This is the first Sunday of Christmas, December the 27th, 2015. We, we studied Samuel and Hannah, his mother. We studied psalm today the, uh, of midwinter we sang songs of midwinter we sang songs of happiness we sang christmas carols we sang old english carols we had all these things to do today the thrift store will be closed thursday december the 31st and pastor pollock will be out of the office starting december the 25th and back on sunday january the 3rd the worship uh, we need new worship lists new people to help us with our worship service we uh, will pray for you, continue to pray for us in our ministry. You can still see Jesus in the cradle, the manger scene in the front, and the cattle are lowing. Jesus is born in a stable, but he came into the world to be the king of the world from the house of David, and he, he is our savior. We confess, we repent, we ask Jesus into our hearts. He is the savior and he leads us through our lives tells us what to do, and he's with us at the end and through eternity. <laughs> St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio, wishes you a, happy, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We hope that you've enjoyed the Christmas season, that you have received Jesus into your heart, that he's the Savior of your life. And we pray that he will continue to be with you throughout eternity, that we can all be one. And we're so pleased that we are one here in part of the body of Christ, part of the Holy Family. <laughs>